Welcome back to Shoe Lights. Today I've got the Manker MK38. I bought this with my own money because I was really interested in this new light. It compares against the Ace Beam X50, which is also an 8 emitter flutter. And if you want to see a really in depth review about the Ace Beam X50, which I loved, go ahead and click on the link up here above right now. But this review is going to be much quicker. It's kind of like I'm going to, you know, take what we know about the X50 and just tell you the differences with this light because it's very similar. These are competitors to each other. Now, the X50 has a built-in battery pack and the Manker MK38 comes with an optional battery pack which has built-in charging and a power bank feature or you can get the one that I have which has a tail cap that you can remove and you can use your own batteries. So, I got that version. I also got it in this gorgeous white. They call it Micro Arc Oxidation. And the name for this flashlight is called the MK38 Satellite. I was told that that's because this white oxidation they're using on it is the same type of process that they use on NASA satellites. Now, other things that are different about this light than the Ace Beam X50 is that the handle here is actually a fandle, meaning it's got dual fans to help cool it. And also it's got two buttons right here. One button controls the fan only, the other button is the UI. Now that's really awesome because this button is wired into the light and you don't have to awkwardly hold it and then kind of come around and two-hand it like you would on the Ace Beam X50. This one, you can literally just hold it by the handle, click, 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 operate the light. This light is gorgeous. I love it. I, I think it is better looking than the Ace Beam X50. I will say, however, there's a couple things that maybe the X50 does a little better. For one thing, I think that the Fandle here, which was, you know, if I'm getting this for the Fandle upgrade, it's it's not, the fans aren't great. They don't blow a lot of air. I'm not convinced that they do much at all. That's one thing. The second thing is, is on the tail cap here, it almost feels like they machined it for typical anodization. And then the micro arc is a little thicker than normal. So when you go to unscrew it, you really have to muscle it. I mean, it is hard to get open. But the other th reason I got this light was because I wanted to use my own batteries. And I think they kind of knocked this out of the park, the way that this hap works here. Uh, Manker has done this in the past. They use this kind of pull system here so that it lines up. Because these batteries are in series, right? But instead of making you use a caddy, and caddies can be really annoying. They just have you put the batteries in the correct way. So you look in here and you see the one spring. So you put the negative terminal down there. And then you put the positive on this one here and on this one here. Now when you got them set up correctly, you can't screw this up. I mean, you could have screwed that up, I guess. But if you look and you're using your brain, you're good. Then you're going to set these two poles like this and then screw it on, okay? And as I said, it's kind of impossible to mess it up because of the fact that the cap won't come together unless you got it all lined up correctly. Once you got it on here, then you can turn it on. Now, here's another feature I thought was really awesome. I had this light on lockout, and then I took the batteries out, right? Well, when I put the batteries back in, watch this. See, nothing. That's because it's still on lockout. So if I hit one, two, three, four, it comes on. I thought that was a really awesome feature. So whatever they're doing with lockout, it stores in the uh, microprocessor here, and uh, it doesn't need batteries to, to remember that. It's stored in non-volatile memory. Now, even though I threw into question like how good these fans are, I do like that I can press the button and the fans come on even when it's not in use. So for example, if I turn it on and it's in use, and then I turn it off and I decide it's hot, I can turn the fan on and just kind of set it down. Now while the fan is on, you'll see that a little, a little light came on there. See, a little light. And that light tells me the uh, battery voltage. Also, it 
can be used as a locator, I noticed. So if I lock this light out, one, two, three, four, and it's now locked, it flashed confirmation, it can be off or I can press this button once and it stays on. So that's kind of neat. I mean, if you're camping or something, you can lock the light out, put it in the uh, corner of your tent, but leave that on, and that way you can find it. It, it. They call it a beacon. They actually call it a beacon. You see it strobing there. I have no intention to go through every single UI element in this video, but I did want to point out that if you press and hold, you get kind of an eco mode, they call it, which are really low modes, meaning... For example, let me try this again, press and hold. And then if I press and hold again, we can go to some pretty low modes here, okay? So there we go. Let's put that in the lumen tube and you can see that we can get about 32, 32 lumens. Uh, that runs forever on a light like this. And then if you just tap once from off, it goes to the normal modes and press and hold, and you can cycle through five different modes, okay? Then press and hold again, and it'll go down the five different modes. At the lowest on the normal modes, I'm getting about 800 lumens, okay? Now, one thing about the UI that I noticed, and this will be of interest to people, is every time you press and hold on the button, it goes the opposite direction you're going last, which I find kind of annoying, to be honest, because watch, here I am at the lowest of five, and I'm at 800 lumens, so I'll press and ho I'll hold, I went up one level, so now I'm at 1600 lumens, now when I press and hold again, watch, it's going to go down first, see, it goes down, so now I have to press and hold again, go up one, and then another one, now I'm on the third mode, and we can see that I'm about 4000 lumens, like 3800, now, when I press and hold again, it's going to go down. So, and then I got to press and hold again. And there, we're now on four out of five modes. And we're at uh, about 8,000 lumens. Okay, 8,000. And then press and then press again. And now we're at five out of five. And that is about 1,700, 1,650 lumens. Okay. Now, I'm going to let this cool down a little bit. And then I even just turned the fan on. I'm going to let this cool down and then we'll hit turbo and see what we get. Okay, let's do the measurement on turbo. Now it's cool to the touch. I'm going to turn the fan on before I hit turbo. And I also want to point out that when you saw me put those batteries in at the beginning of this video, they were fully charged, fresh off the charger at 4.2 volts each. And I've only run it just a short amount of time on the tube here. So consider these you know, near 100%. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. And you're going to see something here, which I think is interesting. Okay, here we go. Let's turn the fan on. And let's double tap to turbo. Okay, there we go. We just hit 30,000. And it's now dropping rapidly. We're at 25,000 lumens. And, you know, by about 30 seconds here we're going to be about mm, 24,000 23,000 lumens okay so let me go ahead and turn it off and I'll keep the fan on to cool it down so that's what I wanted to show basically I just wanted to show that this light hits about 30,000 lumens right at turn on zero seconds and by ANSI it's about 24,000 lumens, okay? Now, this is the 5,000K version. So, Manker claims it's going to hit about 39,500. It's about 40,000. And I'm getting 30,000 out the front. Let's take this outside and see how it looks on my street. All right, I'm out front here with the MK38. I don't have the X50 with me, so I can't show you that, but I'm going to compare it against just the ubiquitous D4 V2, just to give you an idea of the difference between a normal light that you'd be used to and this one. Let's aim it at the ground really quickly here and show you something that I noticed. The MK38, since I've tested it, on a lumen tube, I know what these levels are. And that right there, let's just make sure I'm all the way down. Okay, that is 800 lumens, all right? And this right here, let's see, okay, that's at the high, so that's 17,000. Here's 8,000 lumens. 
Now, here's the trick about this. 8,000 lumens, okay, let me turn it off. This is about 3,000. And the hotspot looks hotter, but it's much less lumens. And the reason why is because it's not as floody on the D4 V2, okay? So on the MK38 here, you can see how it just, it just the entire area is lit up. So, you know, the lumens are spread out on this MK38. Now let's take a look at how it looks down my street here. A reminder that my white balance is locked to 5000K daylight and my exposure's locked. And in the back here, those row of four palm trees are 110 meters away. So here's the D4 V2. Let's go straight to turbo. You can see we're getting those four palm trees back there. And you can see how it looks on my street. Okay, that's about 3,000 lumens with the SST-20s. And here comes, let me turn the fan on, and here comes turbo. Oh, wow. So, clearly it's brighter on those trees, but look how the entire street's just lit up. All right, so that's why you get a light like this. Um, I, I do love this light. I love the X50 as well. I would say, um, this is my summary uh, judgment here, if you want a light that has you know, replaceable batteries, you got to go with the MK38 because the X50 has a built-in battery pack. And also, I love the look of this light and I love where the controls are on the handle. The X50, however, doesn't seem to drop as fast in lumens. Um, they're similar. I, I don't think you're going to notice a huge difference between the two. Remember that you know, if something's 30,000 lumens and you go up to 35,000, it's almost imperceptible. You have to go up 50% to notice. So I think this is a, a recommended light. I really like it. And uh, uh, I almost wonder if I should have gotten the SFT version just for the extra throw. So be sure to check out that other video I got with the X50 and uh, see which one you prefer. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm releasing videos all the time.